Hello everyone, welcome back, I'm the City Witch. So I thought I would do an unboxing video for this beautiful new deck I got in the May subscription box for The Witch's Moon. Now the box theme was all tarot, I got some absolutely gorgeous stuff in that including this deck. I've never seen this deck before, I don't know who it's by, I don't know anything about it, but we did receive a divination card from the divination that came from this deck and I liked what I saw so I'm expecting to really like this deck. So it's called the Intuitive Knight Goddess Tarot. This is what the box looks like. And on the back it says, connect to intuition, delve into nature, cross the hidden veil, embrace the universe, unfold your myth. Uh, that's what the back of the box looks like. It says it's printed in China. It's a 78 card tarot deck with a 144 page companion guidebook created and designed by Lizzie Silverman and the Eye of Astro. Hmm. Okay, so let's have a little look and see what this is all about. Ooh, oh, well, I really like the inside of the box. That's quite cool with the hands. I really like that, it's nifty. <laughs> let's pop that to one side. So first of all, let's have a look at the guidebook. So it's kind of a standard guidebook for what you get inside a tarot. Um, it says on the back, pull from the stars, trust what you receive. Oh, that's nice. Let's see what we have inside. So all the pages are black and white. It's quite nice. I like the aesthetic. So it says, oh, we have some mantras, first of all. What is tarot about the deck? How to work with your cards. So connect with your deck, spreads and clearing. Card symbolism. Ooh. Uh, there's a quick guide, origin story, meet the maker and some acknowledgements. Ooh, it's quite nice. So, ooh, let's read some of the mantras, shall we? So, I am grateful for where I am today. I am enough. I have enough. I am present. I am mindful. I am the master of my own destiny. My growth is eternal. I have love in my heart. My potential is infinite. Trust my imagination. I have people in my life who love and support me. I welcome abundance into my life. My path is already laid before me. My magic is my power. Oh, I like them. Some really good ones there. So information on what it is tarot, about the deck, how to work with the cards, connecting with your deck. So with the spreads, we have a four card spread. It's different to the three card. Um, we always get the three card spread in every deck, so it's kind of refreshing to see a different one. So this one says past, present, future and meditation. Ooh, that's interesting. So with the meditation, it says to better understand the relationship between the cards as well as provide a more direct answer or action for whatever subject you call, you call to attention. Look to it for guidance if the rest of the reading is a bit murky or to drive the clarity of the cards home when they sing in unison. Ooh. Oh, and we have the three card spread. <laughs> uh, seven card chakra spread. And I think that's it for spreads. Yeah, and then there's some information about clearing and then card symbolism. Um, and then the cards are laid out. So let's look at how they're laid out so we know. So um, our first card, so in this it's not the um, Fool, it's Potential, that's interesting, and then it gives some information. Um, so, it, so it looks like they've changed it all, so it says here traditionally Fool, but they've called it Potential, and then the second card in the deck, or card number one as it's known, the Witch, so that replaces the Magician. So it looks like the cards are a little bit different than this one, so it's going to take a little bit of work and time to learn the deck I think. So let's have a look at the cards and see what we've got. I kind of like that it's called potential because the fool is a card of potential. It's a little comes with that like naive energy. So, so I kind of like that they've relabeled this actually. So, first card potential instead of the fool. It's quite a pretty card that actually. The witch. That's nice. It's got a very um, Indian theme to that. Really think that's beautiful. Love the col colours in her dress. High Priestess, that's pretty as well. The Empress, wow, get very Oriental theme from that one. The 
the monarch. Oh, so that's uh, replacing the emperor. The mystic. I love the symbols of the moon on that. That makes me think of Aphrodite. The Wayfarer. Wow, so these cards are definitely very, very different. But I love the symbolism. I like how they're including planets and animals. You could get a lot from the imagery on the cards. Freedom. Wow. That's a beautiful card. Strength. It's very different to how you perceive the strength card in the tarot because obviously we usually always see a lion or a lamb you know certain traditional symbols we're not getting that on this introspection Ooh. chance justice that's a beautiful justice card. It's got very traditional symbols in that one. Meditation. Wow, the death card is beautiful. Oh, I really like that. And I like that we can't quite see who death is. Like there's no actual face there. But I definitely get La Santa Morte vibes from that. Um, I don't know why I just do. I think it's maybe the kind of crystally halo that kind of makes me think of the white version of the Santa Morto. So we've got temperance. I like that there's some diversity in this as well. So we're seeing different cultures, different skin colours, um, different mythologies. There's there's quite a lot to absorb with this deck so far. Reclamation. Wow. Revolution, Joan of Arc vibes there. Star. The moon, oh, I'm not keen on that. I usually like the moon in most decks, but I'm, I'm not keen on that one. It looks too like, I don't know, Victorian painting for me. I'm not really into that, so. That, not keen on that one, but the rest of the cards I'm loving so far. <laughs> the sun. It's beautiful as well. Awakening. Bit of an angelic theme going on there with the wings. The universe. So that's replacing... Is that replacing the world card? And now we're getting into our suits. So it's looking so far like our suits are the normal suits we would expect. So we have the Ace of Wands. I feel the poppies. The Two of Wands. The Three of Wands. The Four of Wands. Five of Wands. The Six of Wands. Oh, wow, the deer in that one's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful reindeer. Or oh, stag. <laughs> Seven of Wands, again, um, this kind of gives me, I nearly said Greek then, but I don't know actually, maybe it's a bit more Norse, with the wings and the shield, somewhere in between, like a Norse vibe. The Eight of Wands. The Nine of Wands. The Ten of Wands. Nymph of Wands. 
Hmm. Why nymph? Warrior of Wands. Queen of Wands. That's a lovely card. And the Spirit of Wands. So instead of a king, we have the Spirit. Now we're looking at cups. Oops, kind of stuck together. <laughs> so the Ace of Cups or Chalices, if you prefer. The Two of Cups. The Three of Cups. The Four of Cups. Five of Cups. Oh, that's really pretty. The Six of Cups. The Seven of Cups. Oh, I like that. It's got different things inside each cup. Kind of reminds me of the magician's um, tarot or the wizard's tarot because they all tend to have different things inside their cups, but they're all like magical potions. Reminds me of that. Eight of cups. The nine of cups. Oh, that's a pretty card. You love the rainbow in the background. Ten of cups. Definitely gives me happy, happy vibes. <laughs> Nymph of Cups. Not sure about that one. I don't really like the fish right in the middle. <laughs> Warrior of Cups. Loving the polar bear. Queen of Cups. And the Spirit of Cups. Now we're on to the swords. So we have the Ace of Swords. And the Two of Swords. Wow, I like that one. She's kind of sort of blindfolded. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be a blindfold. So her, her eyes are covered. She can't quite see <laughs> the traditional Three of Swords. Four of Swords, that's a Russian vibe there, with the fur coat and hat. Five of Swords. Hmm. The Six of Swords. The Seven of Swords. The Eight of Swords. The Nine of Swords. The Ten of Swords. And the Nymph of Swords. Warrior of Swords. And the Queen of Swords. Spirit of Swords. And then we've got the Pentacles. So the Ace of Pentacles. It's quite plain considering all the other aces we've had. Are they hands? I know the mountains. <laughs> they look like praying hands for a moment then. Two of Pentacles. The Three of Pentacles. Love the use of crystals surrounding her feet. The Four of Pentacles. The Five of Pentacles. I like the way she's relying on her third eye, her intuition. So her actual eyes are closed, but her third eye is open. 
Six of Pentacles. The Seven of Pentacles. The Eight of Pentacles. The Nine of Pentacles. Oh, that's pretty. Ten of Pentacles. There's all the different crystals. The Nymph of Pentacles. Oops. The Warrior of Pentacles. The Queen of Pentacles. And lastly, the Spirit of Pentacles. So overall, there's a lot of diversity in this deck. There's a lot of different colours, cultures. I don't really see that many different age groups there. It seems to be mostly similar sort of age of woman. Um, but I do like all the different cultures. I'm loving all the colours and the different energies. Um, I'm intrigued by the change of the Major Arcana, the way it's just a little bit different. That's very unique. Um, because the words are, you know, everyone knows what freedom means, um, potential, you know, they're, they're very easy, I think. And as you know, the witch is a replacement for the magician. You just apply the same meanings for that. So all the ones that have had their words changed, like reclamation, you just have to think what that means to you and, you know, maybe look it up a little bit and come up with some, some alternative meanings for that card. Or you can stick to the original meanings of, of the tarot cards if you know them by heart. So even though it might take a little bit of time to learn these, I think overall it, it would be fairly quick process when you think about it because of how they've made it easy with the names they haven't changed it to something complex or complicated they've kept it as something simple like potential so you know what that card's going to mean you can draw then off the imagery of the card for the rest of the reading and then combine it with all the cards surrounding pretty easily um, I really like the back of it as well. So this is something I, I forgot to mention earlier. So the back of the card is just plain black with spots. Now I'm one of these people where I don't like to know if it's reversed or if it's the right way up. And with this, you wouldn't be able to tell one way or the other. So that definitely gets a brownie point from me. Now, one thing I do want to look up because this is called the Intuitive Night Goddess Tarot. So I just want to like spin through, pick a random card and just see if it mentions if it's a specific goddess or a specific energy. So at the moment, just looking at the Six of Cups, a flower headed goddess stands in the tranquil waters of a starry landscape. Glowing cups surround her and she places her right hand into one as she dips herself into the surrounding waters. This is a card of innocence, representing a turn, sorry, a return to values untainted by ego. It asks, asks us to time travel and recall purer experiences. Tap into the wonder of nature and life. Find abundance and beauty around you and begin to share its magic. Remember the ability for transformation and growth, the changing of the tides and the ways in which we can reconnect with our emotions, relationships and intuition. Um, so it gives us key words, but it doesn't actually give us what the goddess inspiration was behind that. I think I would have like liked that. What What is the goddess inspiration? Like, why did you specifically choose that imagery? That would have been a nice extra touch, I think, as information in this. So with the major arcana, um, so it is telling you when it's replaced something. So the monarch, as we know, is replacing the emperor. The mystic is replacing the hierophant. Um, the wayfarer is replacing the lovers. So this represents a goddess. A goddess ventures alone on a journey and comes to a crossroads. Each path is illuminated by six candles, totaling 12 in reference to the astrological houses and the cycles we go through. A wayfarer is a journeyer, often on foot, and this means you are on a path where it's okay to go at your own pace. The wayfarer's right arm holds apples, denoting knowledge, and her left has a snake wrapped around it, referencing the union of Adam and Eve, but also how the snake gets an un... Sorry, how the snake gets an underserved negative reputation. Wow, that was a mouthful. 
This card offers the reader a choice to meditate on ideas of self-love. The lovers are the union of separ separated parts and as a unit, ask us to find the wholeness of self or our self with the universe. Jupiter, known as the guru or teacher planet, looms overhead. In astrology, Jupiter oversees our soul journeys and the paths we take to discover our spiritual selves. So they've made it more of a personal sort of self-love journey rather than something um, external of yourself where you're looking for love within someone else, which is interesting. Uh, the freedom card replaces the chariot. Uh, strength is normal. Introspection is replacing the hermit. Makes sense. Chance is replacing the wheel of fortune. Uh, meditation is the hangman. Uh, then we have the normal death card and temperance. Reclamation is replacing the devil and the revolution is replacing the tower and then the star, the moon and the sun were all normal. Um, the awakening is replacing judgment and the universe is replacing the world. So yeah, so there's a few replacements there and as I say, I think it might take you a, a little bit of time to invest in this deck just to feel its vibes out and get used to its energy. But once you start to really think about what those words mean to you, the, the replacements of those cards, the changes, I think it'll probably come quite easily to you. Um, the main bit is obviously learning the minor, I think, because they don't really have too many changes. Um, but the imagery is going to take a little bit of time to get used to. So overall, I'd probably score this deck about a 7 out of 10. It's not completely my personal cup of tea, not a deck I would usually go for. However, I am going to give it a whirl. I'm going to give it a go because it's come in the Witch's Moon box. And I really want to try it for myself and see how I get on with it. So yeah, so I'm going to score it about a 7 out of 10. So thank you very much for watching, guys. I do hope you enjoyed this flip through. If you have any comments or anything you want to add or say about the deck, then please do so. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. And if you'd like to support my channel, you can do that through Patreon or my Amazon wishlist, which offers light and love and support so I can continue doing what I'm doing. And if you'd like to book my services for either spell work or a tarot reading, you can do that by any of the links provided on the video. Thank you very much for watching, guys. And I will see you very soon. Blessed be.